All right, folks, it's time for us to dive into the Blue in the Face playthrough for Halo 3. This game is part of a long-running franchise that's been defining the gaming industry for over a decade, which means there's a lot of serious stuff to talk about, but there's also a lot of fun and nostalgia to experience. In this series, we're going to play through the campaign to analyze the story, the gameplay, the innovations that exist in Halo 3, and whatever else comes to mind as I get killed by plasma grenades. Now let's get started. Okay, here we go. We are about to start the Halo 3 campaign. There is so much stuff to talk about with regards to Halo as a franchise, all the really cool story elements that happen in Halo 3, and even the gameplay stuff and the soundtrack. It's an amazing experience, and hopefully I can remember to talk through all of it while I'm getting my ass kicked by a bunch of grunts and brutes and other things. So, let's start this bad boy up. For our campaign settings, I'm only going to turn on the Grunt Birthday Party Skull. This is going to make it so that if I headshot a Grunt, they will explode into a ball of confetti, and that's really awesome. So we're going to turn that on. The difficulty, I kind of don't feel like playing on Legendary right now because I actually want to beat the game in a timely manner and be able to have conversation at the same time. Now, I ain't never been scared of nothing in my life, and let it be known that I have beaten Halo 3 on Legendary before, but I'm going to play on Heroic just so I don't feel like blowing my brains out. By the end of it, I'll just feel like bashing my head into my keyboard. I'll still probably get pretty tilted at different points in the campaign. I just, I just, I just want, I don't want, I want to kill a sniper. Yeah. <laughs> and for other options, I think we're pretty much good to go. So let's get in there, do this first mission, and start talking about it. They let me pick. Did I ever tell you that? Choose whichever Spartan I wanted. You know me. I did my research. Watched as you became the soldier we needed you to be. Like the others, you were strong and swift and brave. A natural leader. But you had something they didn't. Something no one saw but me. Can you guess? Luck. Was I wrong? This ain't good. Damn. How far did he fall? Two kilometers. Easy. Stay sharp. Gorman? His armor's locked up. Gel layer could have taken most of the impact. I don't know, Sergeant Major. Radio for Vito. Heavy lift gear. We're not leaving him here. Yeah, you're not. Oh, crazy fool. Why do you always jump? One of these days, you're gonna land on something as stubborn as you are. And I don't do bits and pieces. Where is she, Chief? Where's Cortana? Don't make a girl a promise, if you know you can't keep it. She stayed behind. Corporal, make it quick. Sorry, sir. Your armor's still in partial lockdown. Wait, wait! The Arbiter's with us! Come on now. 
Got enough to worry about without you two trying to kill each other. Were it so easy? We must go. The brutes have our scent. Then they must love the smell of hero. First squad, you're my scouts. Move out, quiet as you can. And just like that, we are starting off the Halo 3 campaign. The story works pretty well as an isolated story, so even if you haven't played Halo 1 and 2, you can still enjoy yourself. There's obviously stuff that you'll appreciate more if you've played through the previous two games in the franchise, but on its own, it's a story of a super soldier who's trying to save the galaxy and also trying to save the girl. And if you can do both, then thumbs up for you. If you can't, then that's unfortunate. What is this, E3? That slow camera pan, though. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Halo 3 and pretty much all the Halo games are very linear experiences, so you can do a whole bunch of that corny stuff that happens at E3 where they're panning around and they're looking at the different things and showing off the textures and stuff. But it, the, the cinematic experience of Halo 3 and all the Halo games really is... Part of the appeal of them is that they, they take you on a fixed path and a fixed story, and that story is really crisp and clean and interesting. This guy's pushing up pretty aggressively, but the Arbiter's got him, and so do the Marines. He can't hurt us. Ooh, look at this. I'm going to try and cycle through as many different weapons as I can just to keep things spicy. It's kind of fun to pick up the different weapons, but the one I have right now is the Brute Shot, if I'm remembering correctly, and it's a grenade launcher. So this should cause some pretty good devastation. Hello. There's a guy up there. Let's try and take him out. Yeah, he's done. Ooh, the brute shot is super effective against the crowds of enemies. And then we've still got our magnum so we can poke people from range. <laughs> the magnum has absurd range for a pistol. But it's always been like that in, in Halo. And it probably always will be. So we're almost out of ammo with the Brute Shot, but we've got one more blast that we can fire off, so I'll try and pick a nice juicy target. Grunt. That was the juiciest of targets. <laughs> okay, let's find something else that we can pick up. I think I saw maybe a plasma pistol. Yeah, that's, that's not great, but it's something. I have two of them, so maybe it's not horrible. It's got some cool benefits. If you fire a plasma pistol at a shielded enemy, which that brute was, it will instantly destroy their shield. So that's a nice gameplay benefit. And I don't want to die here. So let's just pull, pull back a little bit and let our shields come back. My weapons are not great right now. But the, the game does a, a solid job of, of making you switch between weapons, but with the way that you get ammo, it's it's not you, you're not going to have infinite ammo for the best guns in the game, like the battle rifle and, and the brute shot. So you are going to no have to switch around a lot. I knew there was a suicide grunt running around and I kind of ignored him because I thought he would just go away. But that's not how that works. I have to kill things if I want them to go away. I didn't realize there was a turret on the floor. This is going to be helpful if i can get closer and deal with them then this turret will just absolutely wreck shot so what i was saying before is the game does a pretty good job of distributing weapons to you at an even pace to where you you never feel like you have access to the most powerful weapons at infinitum but you do get a hold of them sometimes and when you do you feel absolutely amazing but that doesn't mean you're invincible <laughs> so you do have to be careful about about that and it, this is in direct contrast to games like borderlands and destiny where you have your own set and even call of duty where you have your own set loadout and you kind of just run with what you have and you, you expect the game to give you ammo for your fixed loadout but in games like halo and doom the more classic arena shooters they they feed you weapons at 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 uh at a specific pacing now with Doom, I guess it's a little different because you kind of... Nah, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. 
Now, this next section, I believe, yes, we are going to have access to a carbine, which is a basically an alien marksman rifle. So we get to sit back and pew pew the enemies a little bit, hopefully get some grunt birthday party action. And by the way, those enemies in the back over there, those jackals, are part of why I don't like playing the game on Legendary by myself. They can just be really frustrating, they're insanely accurate, and they will kill you in basically one shot. And that's a little bit frustrating. But it's kind of meant to be that way. Legendary is meant to be the ultimate, most hardcore experience possible, and it doesn't care if you're sad or frustrated by the end of it. Yeah, so we're just doing a little pew pew, and it's it's fine. Yeah, getting those headshots, real simple. I love the grunt birthday party. It just it the feedback that you get when you headshot an enemy with the grunt birthday party is very satisfying. Because Halo Three came out at a time when hit markers weren't as common. Call of Duty had its hit markers. Ah, uh, whoops. But the, the, the way that hit markers are handled in Halo is, is there basically aren't any. So the, the feedback for when you're actually hitting something is not really there, but the Grunt Birthday Party does give you a good indication of, okay, I've made contact and I've made contact with the head for the killing blow at the very least. But for, for just regular body shots, you don't really know when you're connecting with the body. But I've apparently been picking up a lot of brute shot ammo and I kind of don't want to put it away because it's such a fun gun and I like grenade launchers. So I'll get rid of the carbine for a needler and I'll use this thing. Uh, I find the needler to be really nice against the, the brutes. They're not as agile as the elite, so they can they get hit pretty easily with it. Oh man, he is a, he's a thick boy. That took a lot of shots. Unfortunately, we didn't get to save the guy, but we 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 did all right. Let me not. Oh no, I'm gonna die because I'm I'm bad. <laughs> I forget sometimes that I can actually be killed. Oh, hello, deja vu. <laughs> yeah, the the needler it it sends out these projectiles that have mild tracking on them, and if enough projectiles connect with an enemy, then they explode. Conceptually, amazing. It's, it's an amazing weapon, and practically it's amazing, too. It's one of the more iconic weapons in the Halo franchise. There's a good mixture of iconic weapons and classic weapons. You got the assault rifles and the burst fire weapons, the, the battle rifles, things like that. And then you've got the real crazy stuff, like the plasma grenades, the needler, the brute shot. Well, the brute shot is more of a traditional grenade launcher, rocket launcher style weapon. But it it still looks really iconic because it was designed for the brute enemy, so it's it's very aggressive. It's got a big blade at the bottom of it that you use when you're meleeing, so it has its own unique melee animation. That is very cool. Now let's see if we can get a needler explosion on that brute. Perfect. The loop of just boom. It's 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 beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Get out of here. That was overkill. You used to be able to dual wield needlers. I think they took that out in Halo 3 because it's ridiculous. Could you sacrifice me to complete your mission? Could you watch me die? So that right there was Cortana giving us a little bit of a talk. And we're moving into a checkpoint here. Charlie Foxtrot. Chief, Pelicans are at the river. We got company, so hustle up. Boy. Now, I picked up a battle rifle just now, so I've got superior long-range capabilities. We've got those pelicans off in the distance. They're under attack. Uh-oh. Banshee's coming in. Pelicans are going down. Well, we gotta, we gotta go help them, don't we? <laughs> yep, we got another phantom coming on the field. The, the aliens, the Covenant, bringing their air superiority vehicles in. All right, let me use this brute shot again to kill the guy on the on the turret. I think I just got sniped. Did I just get sniped? Oh my good. Yeah, see, 
that guy over there, he's the reason I don't want to play this on Legendary because he shot me with his sniper from across the way and it left me at basically one shot, but if this was if this was Legendary, that would have killed me instantly. And I don't want to deal with that. But what I do want to deal with is this. <laughs> oh, I got a turret. This is amazing. This is so satisfying. So let's find some enemies to gun down with this. And it's not going to be super hard to find them. Goodbye and goodbye. I took a lot of damage trying to do that, but it was worth it. Let's just see if we can march in and just how much destruction we can cause. Oh, there's a lot. There's a okay. Okay. Difficulty's too high. Can't be completely out of control. <laughs> so th there's a balance to be had between acting silly because I'm holding a minigun and I feel like a god and remembering that the difficulty is actually really high and I, I have to respect the amount of damage that the enemies do. <laughs> Because what, what's interesting about Halo is that it it's a power fantasy game where you're in possession of a of a super soldier, so you're expected to do insane things, but it doesn't let you disrespect the enemies in the game fully and completely. But it does let you have a really good time, and it does let you engage in really cool stuff. And the music is starting to pick up as well, which is making me feel more confident, even though I probably shouldn't. I should still be kind of careful about how I engage with it. Come on. Ah, uh, he put up a shield. Little scaredy cat. Uh, well, I'm not going in there. There you go. You didn't like that, did you? And, and th that's the thing about the music, too, is when the music picks up, it just makes you want to do dumb stuff even more. So anytime the soundtrack gets to a point where it's it's really popping off, I'm going to start playing harder and and trying to do stuff that I probably shouldn't. Uh-oh. Like right here? Let's let's take out our plasma. Stick him. Missed. He missed. I missed. Okay, we got him. <laughs> it's fine. The Banshees will return. Hurry. Now, I've got. I think I should probably exchange out my brute shot at this point because I've been using it a lot. But I just picked up so much ammo for it. Okay, well, there's no new weapons around right now. I don't think there's the assault rifle, but that's really basic, so I'm not going to exchange that. But we did see a good amount of the battle rifle and not a lot of the needler. So let me just go pick that up. There we go. It's not a lot of ammo in it, but enemies use it a lot, so I should be able to pick up more shots with it. Uh, the brood shot is probably not an ideal weapon for right now because we are dealing with long-range marksmen that are hiding in the trees, and the music is also reflecting that. It's become just a an ambient sound effect. They have a sniper. Oh! <laughs> But yeah, the music is 100% reflecting what's going on in the game and the, the scenarios that we're coming into contact with. The music gets fast and intense when we're dealing with a lot of brutes and, and grunts and when we're dealing with snipers and marksmen. It, it's become more scary and eerie and, and also intense, but for different reasons. It's, it's intense because we're looking in the trees and trying to find the snipers and we don't know their exact position and we could die at any moment. Move, Arbiter! Please! Get out of here! <laughs> yeah, Arbiter, you go get him. I'll just... I'll hide in this corner for a little bit. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But there's, there's a bunch of low-tier weapons around, like plasma pistols, and I just really don't want to use them because they're not very effective. But we're, we're doing okay. The, the, the game is, is feeding us a lot of plasma grenades, so maybe I should just chuck them out like they're candy. Here you go. Piece of candy. There's nobody over there. Oh, he's in the shield. Goodbye. Okay. There we go. Okay, we got a big chunk of ammo for our needler now. So we can move into the next area and lay waste to some guys. Unless, I think the next area has some pretty long-range encounters. So maybe we can work some angles to get this to work.
See how they bait their trap? I will help you spring. Alright, we gotta get Johnson out of there. Alright, let's see if we can close the distance a little bit so that we can use our somewhat close range weapons and yeah I, I hear beam rifles there's there's more snipers around so we gotta we gotta really try and stay out of direct line of sight or avoid the, the really long sight lines somehow this building feels like a bit of a trap this game <laughs> does not have the ability to clamber so if you want to jump over a wall you just have to actually clear the ledge so that's unfortunate. There are some things in Halo 3 that do feel archaic. The fact that you can't sprint is is not necessarily one of the things that makes Halo 3 feel like it's old and somewhat dated. It, it's it's arguably more of a design decision to not have sprint than 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 uh, and it's just because crap. Because the thing about sprinting is it does force you to make more effective decisions because if you have the if, I'll, I'll use destiny as an example when i play destiny in in pve specifically it's very possible for me to put myself into a bad position and then get to a good position because i can sprint i can slide i can i can do a whole bunch of stuff to increase my maneuverability to cancel out the bad decisions that i've made through through movement but in in halo 3 if I walk too far out of cover and I can't, I can't get back quickly. Now, to an extent, I do like the ability to correct my mistakes with sliding and, and clever flicks of the controls and things of that nature. But there is something to be said about the game being balanced around this idea that if you commit to moving out of cover, you really got to commit to it. You, you got you to gotta own that decision. And if it gets you killed, it gets you killed. The, the idea that, that there is no ability to sprint in Halo 3 is it's a fascinating thing that is because I think sprinting existed in first person shooters when Halo 3 was out. I think Call of Duty Modern Warfare was out and I think you, you, you could sprint in that. I, I definitively know you could. So I think the lack of sprinting in Halo was, was more of a design choice than a choice of, uh, hey, let's follow the trends and give people the ability to sprint. But a good question is, does sprinting have a place in Halo? I, th I think it does. I think it's fine. Oh, crap. I think it's fine that Master Chief can sprint and the Spartans can sprint in the newer games. But it's a, it, it is interesting that how, how different the lack of sprinting makes the game feel and it, make, it makes my decisions feel. I really need to get up there to get that carbine ammo that he just dropped from, from me killing him. Because, you know, th with the whole discussion of sprinting being uh, being archaic, it, I, th I don't think you can sprint in, in CSGO. But at, or, or at the very least, sprinting doesn't make you move that much faster the way it does in games like Destiny and, and Call of Duty and, and the, the modern Halo games. So it, it is an interesting question of whether or not sprinting has a place in every game or, or if, if the game is meant to be a, a bit more tactical, should you just remove sprinting altogether or significantly reduce its its effectiveness? It's curious. I don't have the answers. I'm just thinking out loud as I try to get across this bridge without sprinting. Crap. I hope I got a checkpoint. I really do. Because... <laughs> I just have a bad... So oh, I didn't get a check. Okay, well. Crap! I can't do it! No! Come on, dude! No. <laughs> I got killed by a grunt. I just, I just, I just want, I don't want, I want to kill a sniper. I don't, I don't, I don't know where they are. They're, 
<laughs> Insert a joke about Vietnam in the trees or something. I, I was funny. <laughs> look, at, look at that crossfire. Okay, it, it, it didn't take his armor away. He's, he's, he's still there. Help! <laughs> what? You... You sneaky... Surprise, motherfucker! I've made a huge mistake. Long as we're only counting today. I, <laughs> I, I literally just skipped everything and somehow managed to get to the objective. So now I think we just have to <laughs> get get out of here. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that was not how I wanted things to go, but I got a checkpoint, and it seems like maybe the arbiter cleaned things out for me while I wasn't looking, and I'm probably still gonna die. <laughs> but hey, we we did something. <laughs> what a mess, dude. <laughs> but now I can just now that I've gotten my hands on a on a carbine again, things don't feel so impossible. It was just it was so far up the bridge that I, I couldn't really do anything and there were so many snipers this this mission is tough i it, it's partly my fault though because right before coming into this area i swapped out my my battle rifle for a needler so that really cut into my my long range power and it was just hard to keep keep myself topped off but it's it's not a fault of the game or anything it's it's my fault for making a somewhat bad decision of, of swapping a battle rifle for a needler that's not really how the hierarchy of guns works in the in the single player experience hey something's about to happen oh I'm missing the cool action sequence there's a pelican and it's firing at the phantom and it destroyed it oh boy feels good when the allies come in doesn't it <laughs> What a catastrophe. <laughs> and then, of course, we're greeted by a Marine on a minigun. And some nice heroic. Take a load off. IFF confirmed. Contact is Pelican dropship, Kilo 23, over. Roger that. What's the word, Kilo 23? Sierra 117 on board. Request priority clearance, over. Next yours. Come on down. 